our semester, we entitled this classroom to Sedad Haki El Dem, a famous uh, modern Turkish architect. Um, so the classroom has his name as a homage, okay, to the fig to the figure of Sedad Haki El Dem. Uh, next week we might be giving you a little bit more information about this person and who he was and what he did. But for today, we can move on to the uh, lecture. Ozge, do you have some kind of short presentation for myself or can I just move on? Yes, yes. let me tell you, sir. Uh, Alessandro Camis graduated in architecture at Sapienza University in Rome in 1999. In 2007, he discussed his doctoral thesis on history of medieval town planning in Ravenna and therein attended postdoctoral studies until 2014. He taught at the School of Architecture of University of Miami and at the Faculty of Architecture of Guinea American University in Cyprus, where he directed until 2018 the International Center for Heritage Studies. He is a member of Ecomus Italy and Secretary General of the Cyprus Network for Urban Morphology. He is now Associate Professor and Director of the Laboratory of Dynamic Research on Urban Morphology at Aziz University. And his main research interests are on architectural design, urban morphology, and architectural heritage. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, so today we're going to give you some uh, indications about the context of Galata um, and about the survey, digital survey that we have uh, linked. The, the files are linked in the learning management system so you can use those images and also about some urban analysis and design proposals that were done a few years ago in 2019, when we organized the international workshop Urban Facade Istanbul Waterfront. The title of today's presentation is Designing the Waterfront, which is what you're doing, um, the formation process of the specialized organism. So you're not only designing a museum, you're designing one portion, meaningful portion of the waterfront of the Yogro. So that is part of the image of the city, if you wish. Now, we are going to have two more seminars about the history of Galata. Next week, uh, Sergeant Saglam, and the following week, Luca Orlandi, who is also here with us, uh, uh, related to the medieval phase and to the Ottoman phase. I wanted to give you a few information about the uh, older history of this context. Um, we only have one hour and 10 minutes for this seminar because I have to go somewhere else later. So I'm going to do it very quickly, and but then upload the PDF of the presentation uh, on the learning management system for your uh, reference. As, it, as we know, this area has been populated since the foundation of Byzantium, that is the seventh century before Christ. Uh, we have information of, from Strabo of Sikas or Sikis, Sikais, in this area. Uh, we do also have a number of references of this area called Sikais, which means figs, fig trees in Greek, uh, from that time all the way to the Byzantine, Byzantine phase, um, not going in detail. The earliest map we have of Constantinople uh, is this Bondelmonti, famous. Uh, it's not a map, it's a view, a bird's eye view of the city of Constantinople. This drawing dates to the 15th century, and there are many different versions of the drawing. And so you see in this image how, uh, what the city looked like in the 15th century. It is interesting to notice, well, the walls, okay? So we got the walls, we got the main monuments, the Hippodrome, I guess, Sophia. On this side, we got the harbor of Todosius, a number of churches mostly. And on the other side, we have the walls and some churches, San Domenico, uh, other uh, 
landmarks, such as these two uh, rivers on the two sides. And then you can see the Bosphorus uh, and the Golden Horn. Uh, what is interesting to notice is that the walls of Constantinople, the land walls built by Theodosius in the fourth century, um, and the land walls built in different phases from the first, second to the fifth century, let's say, um, uh, this is one, one thing, but the walls on the other side, as far as we know, were built much later, about 1,000 years later, by the Genoese, who acquired that northern sector of the city to be their colony in, at the beginning of the 14th century. Since the Genoese phase, of which you see the walls, the Galata Tower, and so on, the harbor, the city has been growing outside of that perimeter in different phases. I'm going to go through some quick images. So from the you know original medieval core of the area, the city has been growing outwards, following the main direction of what is today Isti Klaucha Desi, and it's still growing. Uh, on this drawing, you see the reconstruction of the path of those walls, the medieval Genoese walls, and the most important monuments, churches, mosques, and so on. Uh, but if we go back to the uh, origin of this settlement, we have information about a number of monuments dating to the Megarian phase. That is the foundation of, course, of Byzantium, six, seventh century before Christ. Uh, the Apollonium, the Temple of Venus Placid, the Furion, uh, which is a fortification, the Temple of Ajax, and a number of um, uh, those in blue tombs have been uncovered in, in time. So if we put together this information, we got one, two, three, four, okay, uh, monuments or religious buildings in this area. We got the fortification right here, the, the, the earliest one, not the one that was done much later by the, uh, the emperor. And a big cistern up there, which is still today under one of those churches. So we may assume that it, if in the seventh century there were monuments, there must have been some kind of settlement. It's why would you build a monument if there's nobody living there? So this is a, a tentative reconstruction that I have made of the hypothetical location of the first Megarian settlement in this area because of the main road, because of the monuments that are listed by uh, Strabo and others, and because of the cisterns supposedly to bring water to that settlement. So we assume that this is the area of the original uh, settlement. But since then, the city has been growing, of course, and on, on the maps you find about Constantinople, this is, you know, Byzantine Constantinople, uh, sixth century, I think it says somewhere. Uh, what, what is interesting to notice that you always see on the other side of the city, you see the Roman Byzantine monuments uh, dating to the sixth century. Sorry, as they were in the sixth century. But on the other side, we see Galata as, you know, as it was in the 14th century. So those walls were built by the Genoese. So basically this map is not consistent. But I would like to show you one very interesting thing, uh, going back to the Buon del Monte view, that on Buon del Monte view, the path of the walls, of the Genoese walls of Galata, seems to be the continuation, geometrical continuation of the path of the Todosian walls. And that is absolutely not true, because if you see the real plan, those, you see, those walls are not at all the continuation of Todosian walls, but rather perhaps the continuation as a geometrical line of the earliest enclosure of the city, uh, uh, the walls built by Constantine the Great upon the foundation. Anyhow, since then, the city has been growing. And okay, again, see, this is the uh, perimeter of those, of that enclosure. And this is what the real picture. Okay, you see the, the difference is, surprising. But if you would continue the path of the Theodosian wall on the other side, it would be where now is Taksim Square. Uh, we have a, a very ancient representation of the city of Constantinople in the Tabula Peutingeriana. This is what you see here is a medieval copy of a, of a fourth, fifth century manuscript, Latin manuscript. 
a map of the entire known world as it was in that time. We don't have the original, we have several medieval copies of that map. And this is the close up of Constantinopolis, where you can see, uh, well, the, the writing Constantinopolis, then perhaps this is the emperor sitting on his uh, throne. And then we have one of those columns. And on the other side, we have Sikas. That is Sikas, depicted with a little uh, house. And that stretch of water is the Golden Horn. In uh, from what is also uh, to be noted also is that on this map, the only road that leads to Constantinople is this one, not the one that goes to the main city, but the one that goes to uh, Sikas, to Galata. Uh, of course, there was a road. There are also writings about that road because on this map, which what we see are the main cities and the roads, and also the, the distance between one point and the other one. So this is 12 from Himea, the station before, to Sikas, 12 miles. So it's like a Michelin, Michelin map that gives you the distance. It is possible to reconstruct all those locations from Sikas, Timea, Phileas, which today correspond to um, Karakoy, as you know, Belgrade, Bekendik, Atopol, and then in Bulgaria. So that road is running um, on the Black Sea uh, shore all the way to Bulgaria, and then turning west towards um, Belgrade, Be the one in, in Serbia, Belgrade. But this is Belgrade, Belgrade in Turkey. On that same, uh, sorry, uh, this is the Piltingenian map. So we have information about this place being a built uh, settlement, at least. Uh, another very important document is the Notitia Urbis Constantino Constantinopolitana, a catalog of buildings in the city of Constantinople dated to the fifth century. So the 14 regions that the, uh, the city was divided in, um, Mahalesi, we would say today, uh, this one was the 13th region. Re Regio Terza Decima, Ticenaes, it's called Sikas, Sikais. And then there's a topographical, or if you wish, morphological description of the, of the context. It's divided from the main city by the stretch of sea, and it climbs up on the, on the side of the hill, et cetera, et cetera. Moreover, in that same document, we have a list of the buildings that were in this region in that time, for the fifth century. Ecclesia, a church, Termas Honorianas, the, the baths to, uh, dedicated to the Emperor Honorius, the Forum Honoriaru, Honorianum, a theater, the shipyards, Navalia, um, 431 houses, one portico, and so on. That uh, very detailed description of the main buildings in the um, in, in the city of Constantinople, it could be considered something like a cadastral document for taxation purposes. So it probably is accurate. Ne nevertheless, we're pretty sure that this area was built up in the fifth century. And it was. Uh, it is interesting to uh, uh, analyze the uh, population of this um, area as studied by uh, Edhem Eldem upon the uh, survey that the Ottoman administration did after entering in Constantinople at the end of the uh, of the 15th century. So you can see Muslims in this area, Latins in this triangle, and Greeks on that other side. We know that the former colony of Genoa was inhabited by Genoese and Latins, uh, which left the city mostly after the and entrance of the Ottomans. But what about the Greeks? What about the Greeks on this area, on the eastern side? Well, we cannot be sure, but it seems like there was a strong concentration of Greeks in this area, which probably dates before to before the Genoese uh, settlement. So if we overlap this with this map here, the one I have shown, there you go, this one, where we uh, tentatively assume that this was the area of the original settlement, we have a proof, some kind of a proof of that, uh, uh, looking at the distribution of the ethnical distribution of the population in the 15th century. 
And this area might correspond to what is called Argyropolis in some of the sources, the city of, of Silver. Um, again, so this is not, an, you know, not, not a lecture about history, but I wanted to give you an overview. This area is very old and it has different phases for sure. But what we try to do in our uh, laboratory is to reconstruct the phases of the growth of the settlement uh, on either side of the Golden Horn. So you see the primitive, you know, Megarian settlement colony of Byzantium and the gate <clears throat> of that walled enclosure, which in the second century was in, 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 in you know, increased by an uh, urban addition by Severus Emperor. So that original gate became the square, the main center of the city, where today is Hagia Sophia. And a new gate was established. Furthermore, Constantine the Great refounded the city in the fourth century and established a new set of walls, a new gate, and there's a new piece of city which is added. What used to be the gate of the Sibadian, um enclosure became the main square of the city, the Forum of Constantine. Finally, we have, we have the Theodosian addition of the walls, and again, this uh, new gate Golden Gate was established there. And on the other side of the Golden Horn, something very similar is happening, corresponding to the primitive Megadian colony in the seventh century, we have the Argyropolis settlement. And within the further expansion of the civilian phase, we have something else in that area, which might correspond to Pedai and Sikais that we have in the sources. And furthermore, with the constant Tinian expansion, we have a new piece over there, probably corresponding to what is named as Justinianopolis on other sources. And you see that every piece of the expansion, okay, of the addition follows the same direction of the, of the urban growth, which is leading to, towards the west, okay, the capital of Rome. More interesting is to be noted that every time there is an addition, what used to be the limit becomes the center. So those red nodes you see there correspond to today where the bridge is, so the main square where the, the tram and the buses stop. And the second one corresponds, did correspond to where the, the, the Genoese um, uh, main square was. And finally, uh, you know, that last enclosure that we have mentioned, if we did continue that on the other side, we would reach where today is Taksim. In 2019, we organized an international workshop on Gata Waterfront, and in cooperation with University of Parma, University of Sapienza, University of Federico II Naples, and Florence. And they're in for two weeks. Students have been uh, working on, the, on this waterfront uh, with a digital survey, laser scan of survey, and those are the areas that were surveyed in that time, and with different design proposal. We have an entire point cloud of the most of the waterfront. We have given to you the auto images extracted from that point cloud because the point cloud is very heavy. This is a video we can watch again.
Okay, uh, this video is linked on the learning management system. If you want to watch it, you can use eventually use screenshots from here for your um, studies and uh, design proposals. Also, the, the site visit we have done last Friday, uh, there is a folder, shared folder in the LinkedIn in the management system, learning management system, where you can upload your videos or photographs so that everyone can, those who were not able to attend our site visit on in Galata, uh, they can experience, including the guided tour that Luca Orlandi gave us. So there's a video in that one of those folders, I think, uh, Old Guvanshi uploaded that. So within the uh, summer school, we accomplished, as I mentioned, a complete uh, chromatic laser scanned LIDA survey. Uh, where we have the entire model of that, uh, and we saw the video, and these are some of those screenshots. From there, we generated auto images, uh, plans, sections like this one, elevations that are available for you as JPEGs. Uh, and these are measured JPEGs, like elevation drawings. So there's a scale uh, information within the JPEG or within one of those TXT files that are uh, have the same name in the folder. And uh, so you should be able to insert these JPEGs in your uh, silhouette or elevation drawing and use them as a reference. Within the international workshop, we have, there's one more person came, coming in, Otsuge, and that is Berke. Can you please take note of that? So that is okay. three, three in class. Sorry for that. Well, in different groups, uh, students have been working on different topics. Um, and this team, you see their names there. Uh, created some kind of an urban analysis of the uh, hierarchy of paths of the urban tissue of Galata using the Italian School of Board Morphology urban tissue analysis. So, you know, they determine the matrix route, the plant construction connection, trying to outline, and that in black is the area of your design proposal, uh, the entire formation process of the of this portion of urban tissue. But well, you notice the Kurshun Luhan there, the, the other important buildings that are in the area. What is interesting to know that what you're doing, you're designing in this perimeter. And in that perimeter, there is an urban tissue. Not very ancient, but there is an urban tissue. So if you choose, you, you may want to demolish some of that or not. But if you want to demolish that, whatever you're going to design in, in that uh, place, might be uh, following the understanding of the formation process, the urban tissue. So we got rows continuing, see, like that. And therefore, what you design in that spot might be considering uh, this. And in this area, for you to know, there's a market today, but the market uh, was built on top of the former mosque, taking the direction of the mosque, which is oriented to Mecca, or actually it's probably this direction, oriented to Mecca. And that mosque was built on top of, um, of two churches, medieval churches. So we have a palimpsest of different things, one on top of the other one. And that is the point. Designing anything in a context like this means taking into account the knowledge of the context, not only the monuments, the, you know, the walls, the churches, mosques, uh, the Han and so on, but also the urban tissue. The urban tissue is part of the history of the place. Another team of students led by Zoran uh, University of Belgrade have been working on the social aspect of this place and the pedestrian paths and the modalities that are determined therein. The point is that if you demolish the tissue, those connections, social connections, those pedestrian paths could uh, continue to exist, determining the shape of the new building you're designing, because the building is not an object, it is part of a larger organism, the urban tissue. So these are some of those analyses, modalities, interconnections, pedestrian flows, that could be interesting for you to propose your own analysis. I would not recommend copying and pasting any of these in your uh, posters, because that would be plagiarism, but you can for sure find some ideas. That is, according to that team, the evolution of the, of the uh, streets, 
from uh, 1905 to 19, 2014. Um, another team of that workshop did work on the proposal of a new design. No, this is the same team, I beg your pardon. So this is their design proposal of the waterfront. And you see they have basically used the drawings, the ortho images to recreate the silhouette and then came out with a proposal, which is in this case, mostly related to the social uh, spaces and their use for their public use. Another team from University of Parma, led by Professor Marito and, and Professor Gerri, a student from University of Parma, took a quite different approach. Uh, after a quantitative analysis of the urban nodalities, so the intersection between roads and their weights in you know, uh, the amount of track traffic, or this is actually talking about matrix routes to first, second, and third level. Um, therefore, urban analysis and the environmental analysis of the direction of the wind and the climate and the direction of the sun, uh, which is something you probably know how to do, but this kind of approach brought them to the design of a new proposal, and that is in this area, demolishing most of the urban tissue, even on the other side, which I do not agree with, that is an historical urban tissue, and but again, besides demolishing, they designed something which is basically the continuation of the surrounding urban tissue, as you can see, so the street networks is a continuation of that, in a way, that new building uh, resembles the idea of the urban tissue that was there before, not as an imitation, but as a continuation of the process. Now, I don't think it's a good idea to demolish all that urban tissue, and even in this area, but this is their proposal, okay? Demolition of everything except the monuments, the Han and the, and the market, and then the redesign of a new urban tissue, mixed residential use, I think it was. And that is the rendering of the entire proposal. Another team uh, of Parma on similar premises, urban analysis, environmental analysis, uh, functions and building types. And uh, there you go, these are the climatic consideration, came out with another proposal, which is similar in, in, in spirit, uh, demolition, complete demolition of the urban tissue and a replacement with a new, design proposal, which is conceived as the, as the continuation of the surrounding urban tissues, not as a separate object. And there you go. We can see the different functions, residential, commercial, educational, and so on. And these are some renderings of that proposal. Uh, these are not my design proposals. These come from University of Parma. But I thought it would be interesting for you to take a look at these at the approach of design. So the building is not an object. The building is part of the surrounding urban tissue, moreover part of the waterfront, where not only we have the standing fragments of the Galata walls next to the uh, subway bridge, we have the urban tissue, the old buildings, we have um, uh, a tomb, an Ottoman tomb over there, we have the waterfront, but we also have contemporary infrastructure, the bridge, the the street and so on. Another team from, from Parma uh, did something very similar, the analysis of the nodalities and type of polarities and the routes and the building types and the uses of the buildings and the environmental analysis and came out with this other proposal. You see that the design is the uh, continuation of the understanding that's a design proposal. Uh, uh, of the understanding of the phases of growth of the existing uh, structures. Please note that recently, I think four or five years ago, somebody has redesigned the, the, the pedestrian spaces on the waterfront, including paths and seats and, and you know green uh, trees uh, and so on. I would suggest to you know keep that. Why should you change it? Um, but eventually extend that kind of landscaping to the areas where it was not accomplished yet. And this is the third Padma proposal, um, uh, master plan. You can see the silhouette and the, uh, and the, and the plan, and also uh, a, a rendering, Photoshop rendering of the proposal as inserted in its surrounding context. 
Oh, do not forget the Galata Tower, okay, which is very important. It's one of the most important landmarks of the city of, of Istanbul, even today, and is indeed visible from the waterfront. So when you think of the waterfront new building, you've got Galata Tower on top. That's something to take into account. And these are some renderings of that, you know, an internal street uh, surrounded by shops, which takes the place of the former street uh, of the of the urban tissue. Another design proposal, quite different, if you wish, um, was uh, uh, led by Professor Arcidiacono of the University of Reggio Calabria Mediterranea with the, the students. Some of these students were from Ozegin, some of them were for, from, from Reggio Calabria. Um, and this is a, a quite different approach. If the one of Parma is environmental urban tissue, kind of, okay, a blend of environmental approach and urban tissue analysis and approach. This one is based on models, completely different. And the model, the selected model is the Hippodrome, the biggest building of the city of Constantinople, but today the biggest uh, open space of Istanbul. So what they did, they took the form of and, and measure of the hippodrome and played with it, okay? Mounting it in a different configuration or deconstructed that form, if you wanna use that term, in order to define something else on the other side. That is the hippodrome as it looked like, this is a reconstruction, uh, as it looked like um, sometime in the fourth, fifth century, I would say. And you see that is the Forum of Constantine as it has been reconstructed. It's still, there's a lot of debate about the form of that space. But again, that was the, the center of the city, if you wish. This is the Theodosian Hardwood and the Hippodrome, which was flanked by the Church of Hagia Sophia. Where is the Church of Hagia Sophia? Not even shown here. Here? The Church of Hagia Sophia, the uh, Tetrastorn or Augustae on a huge open space or square, uh, and the, the Imperial Palace right here. Now, today we got, I guess, Sophia is still there. The Hippodrome, we got some ruins, we got the obelisk, we got some fragments on the ground. The Imperial Palace was replaced, let's say replaced by the Blue Mosque, that is the location. And, but that, you know, empty space is still there. It, now it's a public space with, with gardens. So the center, the symbolic center of the city as it is today, is the same as it was in, in the foundation. You got the long dure, you know, long duration of these public spaces in the city. So what they did, they took the hippodrome, they played with it, they put it on the other side, and there the, they designed their own proposal, which is based on the demolition of most of the existing urban tissue, which I do not agree with, but that's their own proposal, isolating the Kurshun Luhan and the other um the, what is this, the market, the, help me out, what, Luca, what is this, the, another Ottoman building, okay. This is the market, the bazaar, the, the Bedestan, Bedestan by Mehmet the Conqueror. Okay, the, the Bedestan, so they, they you know, the, in their idea, they, they wanted to demolish everything except the main monuments, the Bedestan and the Kurshun Luhan. And then transform this into an open public space, which in their viewpoint is the montage manipulation of the open space of the hippodrome. So you see the Bedestan, you see the Kurshul Luhan, and then open spaces design in order to take the form of the former urban tissue as fountains. And this is the, uh, the result. But the point, the main point of this proposal is that the form of the urban void public space is key in the design proposal. So they're not giving form to the buildings, they're giving form to the void, right? The public space. And they're doing this playing with the model of the, there's also a new building right there, high rise, perhaps too high, but that's my personal opinion. Whereas the entire surface of those uh, empty spaces was designed by keeping the shape of the buildings that were there before demolition and you know so some kind of a fountain uh idea decoration of the uh surfaces is done by uh using the the 
ceramic, you know, a colored ceramic, which is typical of traditional architecture. That's the master plan, okay, of the, the two, Bedestan and Kurshan Luhan, uh, and their proposal. This uh, open space is not flat, it's sloping on the side of the hill, so it's uh, some hybrid form between the hippodrome and a the theater, if you wish. But that I thought it was interesting, see, it's coming up. So that from there, people could sit and use this as a theater, a place for a public festival. See, the decoration of those steps, they had the idea of using these maiolica, you know, these uh, decorated uh, ceramic to uh, blend in with the character of the context. So that was pretty quick, and um, which is good. I provided uh, you um, a list of references. Most of these are available if you Google them. You want to find them online as PDF. And there is one uh, video, other video, that we can take a look at right now, which is a video we have done within our Edeforex research about this summer school. Hold on a second, hold on a second. Now I need to change my screen sharing. I want to stop sharing and share again. Now this uh, Edeforex research is, am I sharing the audio? Am I sharing the audio? Yes, is an Erasmus uh, European research that we uh, are doing together with Warsaw Polytechnic in Poland, University of Ferrara, University of Madeira in Portugal, um, University of Madeira in Portugal, and uh, what else do we have? Uh, Ozigi University and, and others. Um, a three years funded research about the massive technologies for design. So we created some videos to uh, illustrate what we have been doing in Galata, and this is one. I wanted to let you know that in July, the first week of July, we're going to have a pilot action, a one week, let's say, training for immersive design experts. Uh, th that is the purpose of the research. We're creating a, 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 an educational program, let's say a master course in immersive design. Um, and uh, so that will be deployed in 2024. But we're going to have two short version of the training program as pilot actions, one in July and one sometime in fall. We can host five Yosekin students within that program, one week online or blended. It will be blended. If any one of you isn't, it's going to be free, of course. And it, it's, it's we're testing the program. So, you know, might not be perfect. But if anyone is interested in joining, just let me know. We will, you know, we can take even more than five. It's going to be this blended one week training with uh, uh, teachers from, from Portugal, Italy, uh, Poland and Turkey um, about immersive technology. So this video, short video, is one of those videos we have created together with Ozgils Guvanci, Zeynep Chenali, Ezgi Cicek, Bora Sezer, who is running the virtual, virtual reality lab here for that uh, intellectual output one of intellectual output one of the edit for x it's very short five minutes but let's take a look hello my name is alessandro kamitz i'm an architect and associate professor at the Faculty of Architecture and Design of Oz Egin University. I'm also directing the dynamic research on urban morphology laboratory. The case study I'm going to present is called Galata Waterfront City Walls and Urban Tissues. The aim of the project is to carry out an integrated digital survey of the blocks facing the western waterfront of Galata while conducting an architectural uh, educational approach towards the collected data. The International Workshop Urban Facade was held in March 2019 at Ozegi University, Istanbul. The quantitative and qualitative data deriving from the survey and the historical sources constitute a first step of an ongoing 
joint research, including the University of Florence and Uzugi University, on the formation process of the urban tissues of Galata and the role of the built heritage within the type of morphological analysis. Students from various universities coordinated by international tutors attended lectures on selected topics related with the workshop design assignments, taking part in the digital survey campaign and designing different solutions for the Galata waterfront in Istanbul, today Beyoglu. The entire process was achieved via a blended immersive design environment through the integration of data acquired with laser scanner and digital photogrammetric survey together with the direct observation and study of historical sources. It was possible to define a three-dimensional model and a description of the preservation state. The technological basis supporting the spatial experience consisted of integrated solution including VOAR, unit game engine compatible with HTC Vive glasses, point cloud generated by a laser scanner, another point cloud generated by a structure from motion software in digital photogrammetric survey, the Moodle platform, learning management system, Google Jamboard, Google Team Drive, Miro, Zoom, Padlet, and computer-aided designs of software such as AutoCAD, 3D Studio Max, SketchUp, Rhino, Rhino as well as MetaShape. Throughout the summer school, uh, innovative design solutions were triggered by immersive technologies and an increased awareness of the importance of architectural heritage and history in the design process. There are many possibilities of extending the case study in the surrounding area uh, by replicating it in other heritage contexts. Methods used in this project are highly replicable, replicable across many other kinds of heritage projects in Turkey and abroad. The model created and optimized can be used for multiple immersive platforms. Also, the availability of professionals online reduce the emission and the carbon print. The international workshop Galata Waterfront uh, considered critically the recent problems of the transformation of the contemporary metropolis of Istanbul, uh, where the substitution of urban tissues with new buildings certain times is not appreciated by the local population. It, though, provided through an extensive laser scanner survey, a digital, uh, rich, immersive learning environment for the architectural design studios in the following semesters. Increased the awareness uh, within the historical urban strata of Istanbul and pointed out the potentials of international cooperation uh, in heritage sites. Okay, that was the short video, um, and uh, I, okay, let me stop this. Uh, that was the um, video. It's on YouTube. You can watch it, and on the on the website on the YouTube channel of the Idaforex. Uh, the research project, you're going to find many other videos. We did five from once again, and the other partners did. Uh, I can share that link as well if anyone is interested. So if anyone is interested in joining our mini pilot plane in action in July, first week, let me know. And uh, we will be playing with these, you know, digital immersive environments to, uh, for design. It's not a design workshop. It's a workshop of immersive technologies applied to design. So I'm done for today. If anyone would like to uh, uh, ask anything or make comments or where we have 15 more minutes, 10 minutes to, um, perhaps I'm gonna stop recording and stop um,